What's up, y'all? Macho Jam Fan 2010 back here for the first official episode of Monster Jam Fan 2010 commentary series. Basically, what the series is about is mainly different topics of Monster Jam's history, good or bad. Um, and it's mainly just like the history on that type of stuff. There's gonna be dark um, stories, um, there's gonna be a lot of the good sides of Monster Jam. Today, the first episode, I decided something I need to do is officially something that I asked kind of the community to go around and go through and stuff that I've seen as well. So anyways, here we go. What is the worst Monster Jam freestyle show? Not racing, but freestyle, because honestly, truly racing, not many people care about racing anymore. But anyways, let's go through it. We're going to go through how I have it feeling in rankings, and then we're going to officially look at what show is truly the worst. Anyways, that means that let's start it. So we have two honorable mentions here. First one is World Finals 11. Okay, okay, okay. Before I do this, this is not from me. This is from one of the people that suggested this. This is from... Um, the Eric Fording uh, community and the Monster Talk community. And this is what uh, one of the Monster Talk uh, uh, members had told World Finals 11. Ultimately, in my opinion, World Finals 11, the track itself was very sh not that really great. I mean, it was definitely interesting. It definitely um, goes in the show basically what Machim was beginning to go to and uh, early warning of what Machim was about to hit. Um, racing, one of the big things though that got in this series though is the racing finals. The racing finals was huge because it's Tom Entz versus Dennis Harrison. Dennis wins his final world championship and that was a huge hit and it's the only time ever Specifically in the final round, the two ever went against each other. The only time they were even that close was 2002 and 2004. That was it. And freestyle, a lot of trucks broke on the course. There was a lot of issues. Some of the highlights, though, is Stone Crusher's run, Air Force Afterburner, whatever Damon Bradshaw kind of super cross looking thing he tried to do. Um, Tom Mintz's is an epic save. Some of the runs by Grinder, Bounty Hunter, uh, George Bellhan, like, lit the, oh, it on fire, sat in the hot seat for a long time, one of the best saves of that whole year, and Charlie Pockin, um, just straight up just, like, rocked the house. That, in, in one of the best runs, uh, in World Finals history, up there, the only one that even challenges it is Metal Militia's run. Anyways, now it's time to get on to the next one. St. Louis 2009. This is the second of my honorable mention. The main reason why it's on this list is the obvious. The winning running score, winning run that was scored was a 23. Now it's not completely bad, but it's not great either. It was by Jim Collar, who didn't even feel regulation. The winning run didn't feel regulation. Uh, basically, he went over the double and did a complete front flip, as you're seeing on your screen. Uh, on the photo, and he landed on all four, and the truck couldn't run. In fact, the top two, safe all uh, minimizer and Avenger, uh, both did a front flip over and were not able to continue. Brutus, who was right around that range as well, went for the double, kind of got cocked kind of got sideways, and then basically broke the rear end out. There's a whole lot of smoke that came through. Um, and there's like a lot of other trucks broke. There was basically barely any trucks that filled the run. The main issue is the tracks were too big. There was too much going on. And this is mainly a big issue in the 2009 season for most tracks. The courses were all so fell went way over and over their heads with these. It's probably a good thing they started embedding them in the cars as well because trucks could break easily over that. The courses looked absolutely insane and great, but also it was... It led to freestyles not really going well on these certain tracks. 2009 will not be the only one that didn't talk about either. In fact, the 2008-2009 era is going to be talked about a lot. Now it's time for the ones I thought that could be the worst. Oakland 2008. I asked, I know this is a mud show. This is another one that another person suggested. By the way, all these that um, 
that were suggested, these three, were from one person. Um, there is, I think, like, uh, three or four people from the Monster Hunter community, and then Eric for himself submitted one, and it's one that's going to be toward that. But, this one that, that one person said, Oakland to his name. It's mainly with mud shows. Yes, mud shows are definitely an issue. It's a big strain on the trucks. It's a big strain on getting anything done. But then there's also that uniqueness. It pushes the drivers. It pushes the truck really to hear all the raw power and engines. And there's something strange about that. You know, it's weird, but you kind of like it. I don't know why, but I just do. It can definitely be an issue. It can definitely turn dangerous. You know, there's always something I've not really had that much of a problem with. Because they're still pretty alive in the same city. A lot of the stuff that mainly happens is because the track's too muddy, and when I mean muddy, it's up on par with almost uh, Tampa 2008, which is the muddiest show in history. Well, maybe except for one show. I don't know, though. What is the muddy show? That actually could be a um, topic for another day. But um, right now, we're getting back to the worst shows. Next up on our list is World Finals 19. This is submitted by two people. This is the one Eric Foring told me, and I've heard another person basically mention World Finals 19, and I've heard way too much crap about Finals 19 for it not to be on this list. You probably knew this was one that was very obviously going to be on the list. World Finals 19, for what I remember Eric, it was basically a highlight reel, basically, and from what I've heard from many other people, it was awful. And attending, apparently, from what I've heard, it, it, I've never seen it, thank God. I was, n I'm not the Macho Macho Gym. It's the second of uh, the final World Finals I had not watched, and thank God I will never watch it. And there are very few highlights. Like, one of the only highlights of the whole night was Ryan Harrison's run. The low point, though, in the show was Avengers' run, by far. That was the low point in the entire show. He goes up to do, like, start off his run and does a giant uh, side wheeling air and rolls right over. Yeah, it was surely the low point of the show. And definitely a beginning at the end of an era. Basic, or basically what we were in. Basically what Machim has been in for the past few years. And this was kind of the peak of whenever it was really, really bad. But we're still in the dark, at least Machim is. Next up is one that I myself thought for a while was the worst show. This is one that is very close, but there's one more that can top it. Indianapolis 2009 is one that another person, but this is one clue myself that thinks this show sucks. This is another one from that era of when track design was way over their heads and there's probably too much crap littered across the floor. And I can definitely tell you guys with a great detail it improves it because i've watched, gone back and rewatched this show and i tell you from start brutus had a decent start but really broke early and not like off the first hit did some great noise but then blew up the truck um bob and tom we're not even gonna talk about that other than the disgusting score it got rap attack tries to do a wheelie and it just like falls over and lands on the tire and saves it but blows the tire out batman has a john Cezuck has a fairly decent run but breaks the truck as well but the first really like good full fairly decent full run backdraft comes out jeremy slipko comes out lays off solid run for a rookie and he ends up getting the hot seat not gonna be the only time he gets a hot seat that's gonna be talked about in another video and talk at some point and then obviously going on through a uh, few of the runs go on eventually Andy Slifko comes out and he has like does a giant wheelie goes off on the side and saves it probably the save of the night crazy thing is uh truck still is like not in great condition at all and then one of the bad and then also some of them got mentioned as well El Toro Loco Chris Baker it's bad when a rookie who's basically in like his third week of competition scored a 20 and was a leader for the, almost the entirety of the show because he was like third truck out i'm pretty sure so it was like very ugly obviously and rolling thunder jim benzik um he went out he had a solid run did some, do some great donuts only to get ruined by mark schrader right, good show on uh, mark um and straight up Avenger comes out, goes over that top, it was like solid truck, goes out, and it break, basically breaks the rear end. Yeah, and I said, oh, 
broke the like four lane bar of the truck. And then I forgot to mention this earlier, but Candace Jolly basically almost set herself and the entire truck on fire. The transmission was going away. And then Randy Brown. Her old pal Randy Brown. You'll hear his name a lot in this commentary series, and not probably in a good way. About screwed another one. Broke the front steering rod right off and the tire blew out. Basically had to go to rear steer. All drive basically with the rear steer and on three wheels essentially. And then he filled the clock. You can see where this is about to go. Tom Metz. Ooh boy, he already embarrassed himself in racing whenever he completely uh, screwed it after he basically had it won, went wide, and then messed up the, um, basically messed up by celebrating too early and trying to get off the track set at the trunk of fire. So he's lucky to even make it back out. And then he gets three hits, including the race lane jump, and starts doing a bunch of sidewalls, and it fails in the most horrifying way possible. And they didn't let him refire, and Tom is there. Which only his anger can only be filled only by the people who probably won refunds to this show. The only people who probably enjoyed this show were the Gravedigger fans. Even then, that could be taken with a grain of salt. So yeah, that's just kind of a microcosm of Tom Entz's entire season, 2009 season rather, um, in that one Indianapolis show. And yeah, it was a horrific show, and it's during an era that um, was one of the worst in Monster Jam's entire history. That is definitely something going to be for a future view. Anyways, that being said, it's now finally time for us to get to the worst show of all time. Detroit 2008! That's the worst show of all time. In Monster Jam's history, freestyle show why? It's Detroit 2008. The racing portion is obviously your normal racing portion. Freestyle. This was a new level. This doesn't even deserve dumpster fire. This deserves like something of the most disgrace, biggest disgrace that's ever come across. So I'll just give a little brief synopsis because a lot of the runs over the lower tracks not me cool care. Scarlet Bandit though comes out fairly early in the freestyle runs. And lays down a 20. And you might think, oh, that's not that big, you know. It was one of the very few, it filled the clock, you know. It won't last long. That lasted almost over half the show. Black Stallion had a somewhat decent run, but couldn't fill the clock. Iron Warrior, like, broke. Aftershock, like, ended up pulling in. Prowler, I think it was either Pouncer or Predator, couldn't, I think, I don't even know if they'd compete in the freestyle. But uh, uh, Prowler broke a wheel off early. I had a solid run going, then broke the wheel right off. And that's just the start. And um, slowly but surely got worse and worse toward the end of the show. Like, I th I'm trying to remember exactly of what I saw, but whatever it was, it was not good. Um, I think I could be wrong about the logo run, or probably am, that it didn't get a good, good run at all. Oh, but a big, big, big thing though. Blue Thunder's run. That run was one of the most depressing ever. And it tried to go up, um, a cross thread, and it rolled over way too early. Also, I've got to mention Brutus's run. Brutus's run was one of the most disappointing since it just broke, like, early on. This is a, basically a, um, basically, um, Basically, mini version of Bruce's most of Bruce's entire time of Monster Jam. And then Jim Kohler. How he managed to score a 24 by not filling the or basically filled the clock with a broken truck. He broke the front end, but managed to just go into donuts because the run in itself had a run going. Obviously, it just. He barely he got the lead. It was kind of just overall just BS. Uh, just everything went so like just not great. So at this point, Grave Digger has an easy time. Grave Digger is going to go well, and it, uh, uh, <laughs> crap. So, um, yeah, this is gonna be one that definitely gets its full show. Uh, kind of reaction type of video. This was an abomination. Like, only worthy 
of something that's bad. And you know what's the biggest insult? Is that an encore run should have won. Blue Thunder made, did an encore run, and that was the best run of the whole night right there. That is a disgusting fact. And the final thing, just to add the final cherry on top, 106.7 the Fox was freestyling on the Australian body. Courtney Draw goes over the racing lane, gets a major error, but tears the truck on the right side, it leans over and gets injured. And apparently, from what I heard, even she ruptured three discs in her back. God, that is bad. And it basically ended her driving career, essentially. So that's a final crappy cherry on the absolute just blow pop pile of crap that we were served. So yeah, then I'll leave this up to you, the rest of y'all. What is the worst show of all time that you've ever watched? And leave it down below, like, subscribe, um, and uh, hit the bell uh, for notifications so you view, view almost instantly because it's the only way you'll be able to view it. A lot more stuff's going on, and um, European airing stuff will be coming out very soon, depending on time. This might be the last video I do before all European airings are happening. And uh, yeah, uh, I just realized Detroit 2008 is getting European airing.